read Revelation 13. Anybody just feel like reading any of it? We're going to pick it up with verse 11. We've talked about the first beast that came out of the sea who had, what was it, seven, seven heads and ten horns? Is that right? Or was it the opposite way? Is that right? So let's pick it up where we read about the second beast. Who will anybody feel like reading? Thank you, Belinda. Pick it up with verse 11. Uh, verse 13, uh, chapter 13, we're going to read 11 through 18. So if you would, read so they can hear you on the camera. Uh-oh, have you got last week's paper? Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. Start with 11 and go to 18. Thank you, Belinda. So, we got into the meat of it tonight. This is the meat of it, I think. We talked about the first beast and what that could represent. And if anybody's had any thoughts on that since last week, I'd love to hear it. Have you studied something that that we need to hear, we need to know? I told Chelsea, I told Chelsea last week, I didn't mention it in Bible study, but just as a thought, I know most people talk about like the what the seven heads and ten as you represent or whatever. Um, a lot of people talk about nations or whatever, but I said it. another possibility, and I'm not saying it's this, God didn't tell me this, I was just throwing out ideas, is that it could be corporations. In like a global world, corporations have as much power as governments do, like Apple, Google, Amazon. I'm not saying they're evil or anything, I'm just saying there's multiple ways you can think about it, so maybe we don't just get, you know, That's stuck very in one way unless the Lord says it. See, that's, that's what I was saying last week. I like that kind of thinking because I said last time that word for the, the number of a man is man there as human being. could be male or female. I said, what if the Antichrist was a woman? I don't really believe that, but who says it couldn't be? But that's another thought. What if, it's, what if these horns or heels or whatever aren't horns and heads? And heads. Some say they're heels. That's why I threw that out. What if it's corporations? You know, who knows? Let's see what the Lord says. And I'm praying about this. I hope y'all will join with me in your daily prayers to say, God, give us revelation on this. Show us, Lord. It says, you know, the here is wisdom. Let him that hath ears hear. We're supposed to know this. So let's continue with this. Let's pick it up with 11, where the second beast comes out of a different place. Remember what we said last week. The first beast came out of the sea. In verse uh, 1, the one in verse 11 is coming up out of the earth. The thing that I said last week that I heard a lot through the past, and Debbie, I wish I brought that diagram you gave me. That was so good. If it's in my pocketbook, I'm going to try to. Have you got another one? Debbie? What I had just said reminded me that Debbie had a diagram from, a, from another church she used to go to that she brought. 
And it shows the layout, the way a lot of churches teach this. Yeah, I don't see it. So maybe if you find it, maybe we can pass it around and let people look at it. Because now I'll go back to what I started to say. I had been taught in the past that the first beast, since he came out of the sea, represented a Gentile, and that the second beast, since he came up from the earth, the land, represented a Jew. And, you know, I would scratch my head on that, thinking, how is that possible? But then, Logan, do you mind sharing what you said to me last week? No, the part where it talks about the two horns like a lamb, made me feel like it was also talking about a Jew just because Jesus was the lamb, and he was Jewish, obviously being the Jews. So. I thought that was very interesting, because it does describe this second beast that comes up out of the land or the earth as having two horns like a lamb. You know, the, it's thrown out there like a lamb. And a lot of people believe that the Antichrist is going to end up somehow in Jerusalem. And he's going to uh, end up uh, trying to claim power there. And the more I thought about what you said, Logan, last week, which is what she just told y'all, I was thinking it would be very interesting to have a Jew as this second beast, which some call the false prophet, to sort of welcome the Antichrist to Jerusalem. You know what I'm saying? Welcome him in, so who knows? And the reason that some teach it this way is that there's some believe there's a biblical pattern that when they talk about the peoples of the sea, the islands or the sea, those are Gentiles. And when they talk about the people of the land, of the earth, that those are Jews. You know, I don't know that I can prove that. That's a common thought. So verse 11, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now, everywhere in the book of Revelation that it talks about a, the dragon, it's a reference to Satan. It's a reference to the devil himself. So, it's very interesting that he has two horns like a meek little lamb, but he speaks like the devil. And if anybody has a different thought on this, please stop me and say it. Because Thank you, Debbie. Because I don't pretend to be an expert on this at all. Yes, exactly. A wolf in sheep's clothing. I'm going to pass this around. Let me see if it says anything about what I just said. This came from, as I said, one of her uh, former churches. Alan, I'll just pass it to you. And if, when you're done, just pass it back to them. I wish I brought my copy. We have two of them. Now, two horns like lamb, spake as a dragon. Verse 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him. Now, notice that some of the words are in bold. And that's because I put the I did that. The Bible didn't do that. I put them in bold because that means I have defined the word somewhere else. So this is verse 12. So that's on the back of your paper. And that power there means authority. Remember that a lot of times the King James Version says power, 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 power. And sometimes that power literally means might and strength, that kind of power. And other times it means authority. Like somebody gives you permission to do something. Do you see the difference? Well, this one, even though it's translated power, really means authority, which is interesting. So in verse 12, he exercises all the authority of the first beast before him, I do not know why I put before in a bold. Is there a reason? You got a word for it. Oh, that's right. Because a lot of times if it's a little word like in, out, of, before, I don't look it up in the Greek. But for some reason I just thought, well, let me look up before. And it had a very strange meaning. The word before that means at the instance of anyone by his power and authority. So it's a little bit different than what I thought. If anybody has any insight on that, let me know. So he's still in verse 12. He exercises all the authority of the first beast before him, whatever that before really means, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Did anybody have any thoughts on the deadly wound? It may have been the Left Behind movies or maybe another movie I watched. The uh, deadly wound was the man got shot. Like somebody tried to kill him, assassinate him, and he came back after that. I don't know that that's biblical. We don't know. 
Any thoughts on the deadly wound? We talked about one of his heads being wounded, right? So. Yeah. This is just me. Do not take this as Bible or God. God didn't tell me this. I really don't know that I think it means the Antichrist is going to get hurt and then seem to come back to life. I think it has something to do with, like Meg said, it could be corporations or what if it is governments, nations. It's going to seem like one of them has been wounded to the point that they're not functional anymore and then suddenly they come back. Yeah. I don't know that that's it, but that seems possible. All right, let's go to verse 13. And he doeth, and that word doeth, I don't have it at the back. And he doeth great wonders. Wonders is on the back, and it's just what you think. Signs, miracles, unusual occurrence, transcending the course of nature. So this, I'm going to call him the false prophet. And if you wonder why I'm doing that, later when it talks about the second beast, it calls him the false prophet. So this false prophet, the wolf in sheep's clothing, as one of y'all said a minute ago, it says, and he doeth great wonders. I assume that's talking about, is that talking about the false prophet or the first beast? Which would be the Antichrist. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. I think it's the second beast that goes on to say miracles he hath power to do in the sight of men. Yes. I think you're right. So I think this is the false prophet who's got power to do miracles. Hey, I'm going to be careful what I say because i got I got friends I'm sort of talking about right now. I'm not trying to talk behind anybody's back. What I want to say is there's a, there's a lying, there are many lying spirits in the world right now. And if y'all don't know that, I'm telling you that as a word from God, most 100%. There's, there are lying spirits. And I am very, very discouraged to see spirit-filled Christians falling for it. This, this stuff I've seen some friends post is very, very disturbing to me. So lying spirits, we would think, well, nobody's going to believe this if this man that we surely are going to see that he's not of God and he's going to do these miracles. We're going to know, oh, yeah, that's not of God. People are obviously easily fooled. I don't understand it, but... I think the Spirit, the Spirit is supposed to move through us and flow through us to bring truth. It's the Spirit of truth to lead us into all truth. But somehow, some people are getting fooled right now. Because it's really easy to hear something sensational and grab hold of it. Just grab hold of it. So can you imagine if somebody here is doing these miracles, calling fire down from heaven? Which again, think about it. That's a biblical type sign. It is what Elijah did on Mount Carmel, you know, basically called fire down from heaven. So you got a biblical type sign, and people would see that and go, oh, that must be of God. So there's a real deception operating here. I think a lot of it has to do with what I think, I guess it was Abigail heard, like, don't confuse, what was it, don't confuse God. And I think a lot of Christians out there are confused. God's voice with what they want to hear because the devil's not stupid like he knows a lot of times he's going to know what you know things that are going to trip your trigger and so if he tells you and starts whispering things to you that you're preconditioned to wanting to hear and believe already a lot of times we're not going to have or I won't say we're not but a lot I feel like a lot of Christians out there aren't having the wisdom or discernment to say to check it you know they're just it, taking it like oh yes I thought so this is good. I thought so. Right. Yeah, I, I thought, thought so. I thought so. I was thinking that, so it must be true. I read an article, and if one of y'all sent it to me, let me know because I can't remember where it came from. I read an article about a game maker. Sound like I'm talking about Hunger Games. I'm not. I'm talking about a real game maker who designs, I guess, maybe video games or something. And they were talking about some effect in a game. I wish I could remember the name of it. An effect to where people... If people have to put two and two together, like you don't come right out and tell them this clue's in the game, and they have to put two and two together to pick up that clue, it somehow goes into their brain and makes them believe it was it's really, really true. I'm probably not making any sense with what I'm trying to say. 
the point of this article was this man was really coming against this movement now, which I don't understand. Is it Q something? What, it, what is it? Q and on. Q and on. That's how you say it. I've heard I don't know. Q and on. Q and on. I don't know. But I know there are people who are listening to the voice of Q or whatever, a lot of Christians. But um, he was saying that this Q and on, whatever it is, is it a person or an organization? Or both? Both. That this person or this organization puts out these little tidbits and clues so that you have to draw the conclusion yourself. He doesn't just say, this is what's happening, guys. He puts little clues out and say, mm -hmm. looks, looks like you can get this, right? You see what's happening? And when your brain puts together what you think he's trying to say, something about the way the brain works is when you have to deduce it and put it together, you believe it more readily. So, so the play is a prize, like, you know. Oh, yeah. You're using, like, it makes you feel good, like, ooh, I have special knowledge, I figured this out. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Pride. Pride, it goes right to your ego. Exactly. It's self-conscious, but you can see that it's sinister because it's pride. As well. Very sinister. What were you going to say, Mom? You know, I was telling you about the pastor that my dad and I watched Sunday on TV. But he had the sermon of Mark of the Beast. And he said, he talking about people that believe the COVID, you know, could be the Mark of the Beast, whether you get the vaccine. He said, rest your mind. He said, I, I do not believe myself that that, that is. But he said it could be a condition of the mind. I 100% that that believe, believe that's how the enemy works. Anybody who's trying to be deceptive doesn't just come right out to you and say, take this month, right now. You're going to go to hell if you do or whatever. And everybody's going to back off from that and go, oh, not me. But if he slips it in with little steps to decondition you, desensitize is the word. Well, what it makes me think of is stepping back a little bit. For some reason, I mean, think that in verse 11 when it says two horns are on the lamb, the Bible also talks about sheep and goats, and sheep and goats both have two horns. So if you don't know, you know, in the end, it talks about in Revelation in the end that the sheep will be divided from the goats, and the goats have a place with the devil in hell. And this is talking about a lamb with two horns that speaks as a dragon. So someone who is not clearly discerning might not be able to tell the difference from the sheep. And so to me, that kind of, when it talks about that, you know, it has two horns like a lamb, but it really speaks like a dragon. You know, it makes me think of that um, parallel. You're noted by their fruit. Exactly. Okay. That is, that's an excellent point. And I'm going to throw this in, which is my broken record, and I don't apologize for it. Hence the need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and flowing in the Holy Ghost. Because also, you know, in Roman times, one of their big gods was Pan. Yes. It was a goat, you know, the blood was supposed to everything that in a cleaner or whatever. But that was one of their their big gods at that time was a goat like creature and that had all, you know, a lot of images of Satan and stuff like that with two horns based on that and also in Revelation. Absolutely. What? He was the god of Pan. He was the god of Pan. The word Pan. Pan. Panic. I forgot that. That's that's good stuff here. Um, I remember. Hang on, Megan. Just yeah, you know me, because I'll forget this if I don't say it. Chuck Pierce. Last week I told you about somebody I had been watching who said one of the biggest problems is I think he said 80% of the modern church world does not preach the baptism of the Holy Ghost and flowing in the Spirit. And he said, how, how is the church going to be able to make it through these times without that? And um, Chuck Pierce, if you don't know, is a, people say he's a prophet. He's made a lot of sense to me than what I've listened to of his recently. So um, the Holy Ghost is key. And I, I keep preaching it, preaching it, preaching it. We've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Say it, Meg. I was just thinking in the in the whole thing we talked about fire coming down from heaven, kind of like Elijah. I think it's once again it's like a parallel story trying to mock the, what is the true story. Yes. Just like the whole Antichrist, kind of like having a wound healed, sort of like Jesus. It's mocking what is true, but I think this is just another testament to us that we have to look for both the fruit <coughs> and the gifts because if we're just
just looking for the signs and wonders we can be easily fooled. If the fruit doesn't come with it, then it's not God. Or it could be somebody operating in God who's honestly headed toward hell just because they've got the gifts, but they don't have the, the light, you know. Such a key. A lot of people are going to claim to be flowing in the Spirit, baptized in the Holy Ghost. But if the fruit isn't coming forth, you got to put that on the shelf and, you know, be watchful. Give me dreams and visions in the night. And you may already be doing that. I, I didn't always do it, but I am now. Okay, verse 13, he does the great wonders. Fire comes down from heaven in the sight of men. That's important. In the sight of men. People are seeing it. Verse 14, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. And in verse 14, had power does not mean either of the words for power that we've been learning. Dunamis and exousia doesn't mean either one of them. Had power there in verses 14 and the one we're getting ready to read in 15 simply means he, he was allowed to do it. But yet it's different from the stronger one for authority. A little bit different. Why do you think it says... It says in the sight of men, and then verse 14 says he has power to do in the sight of the beast. Why do you think it mentions that? Is that important or just thrown in? He has power to do it in, in the sight of the beast. I don't know, that seems important to me somehow. All right, so this is still verse 14. It's a long one. Which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword. Now that does make it seem like a literal person being hurt. And did live. Any thoughts about the image? I looked up that word in the Greek and it means exactly what it says. It can be like a, a literal little figure of a person. It could be a picture of a person somehow. The image of the beast. Any thoughts on why that's thrown in there? Because you're going to be talking about the number of his name. And you're going to be talking about the image of him. In other words, it's going to break it down that people are worshipping all these parts of him. They're worshipping the image. Then here's the, here's the number. The image. That's very good. That's a great point. That they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. I didn't look up that little word, too. To the beast, which had the wound by a, the wound by a sword and did live. Now, again, it could be a person that gets injured or something, or it could be. A country that maybe somebody cut them off from something. Like they kicked them out. I'm just making this up. They kicked them out of the European Union. With, that's a type of a sword, metaphorically. They cut them out. And then they come back. Just a thought. Image to the beast. Y'all ponder that. Get any thoughts, let me know. This is very reminiscent of the book of Daniel. Which is why in the final 
I think it'll be the final segment next time of this Bible study. I'm going to put that we need to read the book of Daniel or at least those last several chapters because it talks about this. Remember, there was an image or how I forget, wasn't it a big tall thing? I'm thinking veggie tails. I got to get veggie tails out of my head right here. I'm thinking the bunny, the bunny. Ooh, I love the bunny. You know, they had to worship the bunny in veggie tails. But wasn't there a big tall image of Nebuchadnezzar? And it was an image. So, so you got something similar here to the book of Daniel. So a lot of times in the Old Testament, you have like a physical representation of a spiritual reality in the New Testament. So, that I mean, it could be a literal image or it could be something like more spiritually speaking. You know? Right, right. A lot of things in the Old Testament were types of shadows of Jesus or spiritual reality. I'm not saying it's the same, but it's still hard to know, I guess. I know. I, I want to know. That's why I believe God's going to tell us. Verse 15, and he, again, that's the false prophet, the second beast, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So the false prophet has power to give life to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast could talk and could cause the people who wouldn't worship him, the image, to be killed. Could be a literal person again. I'm trying to but think. when it says the image of the beast, it's not the, is it the beast? It's the image of the beast. That's what confuses me. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's got to be like different. It's a separate thing, you know. It really, that, I think that's key that we need to pray about that. It's not the beast. It's the image of the beast. The image of the beast. Well, like when he's talking about an image speaking, I would think like a television or something, you know, like, you know, yeah, singing I, on TV or something, talking. Or I actually heard a Bible teacher say that, Rachel, that it, that it could be like a hologram thing that the whole world could somehow see, could be transmitted into the skies, and people could see the beast, you know, talking or giving uh, instructions or whatever. Watch Wonder Woman. Oh, I haven't seen the second Wonder Woman. Oh, well. Is that in it? Oh, well. But yeah, Rachel, that's not far-fetched. Stop it. Anybody else? image plays a role here, doesn't it? That's a great point. When they made the golden calves or whatever, the golden calf wasn't necessarily the one they were, it wasn't the one they were worshiping. They were worshiping whatever God it represented. That's a good point. That word in the Old Testament, the image, they made a golden image, or like, you know, like they would say that sometimes specifically. But they might have been worshiping Baal or something through that golden cap. That's a great point. So here there's some kind of image they're worshiping the beast through. she's right. Hero worship is big. Maybe in every country, but definitely in ours. So it can mean lots of different things, this image of the beast. Now, getting down to the nitty gritty here when we get to verse 16, we skip the idea that he's having people that wouldn't worship the image be killed. So you got genocide going on. It's not genocide. What would you call it? 
Is it genocide? That's what you're wiping out an entire people. That's an entire people group. I, think. I mean, sort of. He's killing people. We know that if they won't bow down to him. Yeah, but they don't want to bow down to him. Yeah, they don't want to bow down to him. Yeah, they don't want to bow down to him. Yeah, they don't want to bow down to him. Yeah, they don't want to bow down to him. Yeah, they don't want to bow down to him. Yeah, they don't want to bow down to him. Yeah, they don't want to bow down to him. Yeah, they don't want to bow down to him. Yeah, they don't want to bow down to him. Yeah, they don't want to bow down to him. Yeah, they don't want to bow down to him. Yeah, they don't want to bow down to where did I put that? Maybe I had that somewhere else. I don't know. I can't find it. Exercise and then call them do it and make it. Where is that, Megan? Is it on the back? Yeah, it's above the portal. It says exercises and calls it. Yes, I got you. Yes. Exercises and calls it in verse 12. They're the same words in Greek. So doeth and maketh in verse 13. And calls it again in verse 16. It's in the middle of the back on the back of that page. All of those are the same word in the Greek. English translated it differently. It means to cause, to bring about, to do, to make. So he makes all, both small and great. Now small is on the back of your page. Small in Thayer's Greek lexicon says this means young in age. It's the same word that was used when Jesus talked about let the little children come unto me. Suffer the little children. It's, it's the same word. You know, I guess when I read it, I sort of thought maybe that small and great meant regular old people like us and the rich ones. But according to this, this is all that means. That word simply means young little people. So both small and great. Now great there means stature. That maybe that means physical stature. Maybe it also means how well known you are, your stature in that way, and age. So again, you got age. You got little ones and you got old ones. I think they're just trying to emphasize everybody, even little children. He makes all or causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. And we know what bond means, like a slave, somebody that's in servitude. To receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Now, receive. You know, that's one of my favorite words in the New Testament. This is not the word I always teach for receive. When I teach about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, there's the two receives. There's lombano, which is where uh, Rachel's offering me something, and I just go, take it. That's the receive. Then the, there's decomai, which is the receive, where somebody just passively they give you something and you just passively take it. You don't have to do any action. It's just put into your hand. This is neither of those. So let's look at this receive. This receive is dedume, not the usual word for receive. It's almost always translated a different way, which is interesting. It's used in the New Testament, it is translated as to give. 365 times. And you can see I put, you know, it's grant 10 times, put 5 times. Miscellaneous translations, which is what, where this one falls into it, 25 different miscellaneous, trans, miscellaneous translations of this verb. How can it mean to give? to receive, again that receive kind of means to give most of the time I don't know, to receive a mark here we are, mark on the back the word for mark in Greek is karagma which it says a stamp here, but when I went into um, further study of what that stamp means, it means an imprinted stamp, 
Like not just something you can wash off, you know, like you go into a ball game and you want to leave and they stamp your hand, but something imprinted into you somehow. So let's look at it. Karagma, a stamp, an imprinted mark, as the mark branded upon horses. A scratch or etching, for example, as in a stamp, as a badge of servitude. So I agree, this is just me, but I don't think it is just something everybody can see stamped on your forehead. I believe somehow it's put in you, etched in you, scratched into you. Like a brand on a horse. That mean, doesn't mean you can't necessarily see it. You see that brand on the horse, but that brand on the horse goes into the horse's skin and cuts into it so it can never be gone. Any thoughts on this? Because now, like I said, we're in the nitty gritty of the Mark the Beast here. What is that mean? talking about the cause within verse 16? Yeah. yeah, that's the one that on the back I couldn't find because if you look at exercises right in the middle, a little bit above the middle fold of the back page, exercises and causes are the same Greek word, which means to cause, to bring about, to do, to make. So he sounds to me like he's making people, you know, he's making them. It says forced. So it also forced all people in verse 16. Yep, that's right. I forgot we have the NIV on another page. If you've got last week's papers, which I forgot mine, but anyhow. Yeah, so it says, let's pick it up with verse. Which one is that, Chelsea? This is such a different. Yeah, but this, this is very different. We should have read this. Look at that if you've got that. Let's, I'm going to pick this up with where we started tonight to read the NIV with verse 11. Then I saw a second beast coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. And it performed great signs, even, even causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of the people. Because of the signs, it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast. It deceived the inhabitants of the earth. I read that wrong. It ordered them to set up an image in honor of the first beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. It also forced, there's the word that in King James was caused or made. It's, it's a very strong word here. It forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads. Now to go back to the Greek words on the back of page one. If you'll notice, now hand and forehead is exactly what you think. In other words, I can't break that down anymore. It literally means your hand and the space between your eyes for forehead. So that's what the Greek meant for that. But in, it says in your hand or in your forehead, in both usages, that word in, which is the Greek word, a real common one, uh, like epe, it's usually translated on. 196 times in the New Testament, it was translated on. It's translated in 120 times, upon 159 times. Thayer's Greek lexicon says that in this usage, it means it will be seen upon the bodies of men externally. Now, I'm not saying Mr. Thayer's right, or he's long gone. I'm not saying he was right. But he thought that the usage here of that little word, in, which usually means on and can mean upon, that he thinks it will be able to be seen. Well, I don't know. It would make sense just because it said, you know, say that he had a more or the name of the beast, you know, and if it's the name, if you have the name of the beast, if it's 
you know, that makes it sound like that's something that's going to be displayed that can be seen, you know. Right. And besides, I mean, let's be honest, the, the devil is one that wants everyone to know. He wants everyone to know. And so I find it hard to believe that, like, you know, because I know a lot of people worry about a vaccine or something. I feel like what, I feel like the devil's going to want something that is a, a physical, hey, look at this. This means that you are mine, that everyone can see, you know. Yeah, when you said that, for some reason I was thinking of tattoos. You know, tattoos look like pictures on your skin, but they're actually scratched into your skin. Right. I haven't had one if they say they hurt because they're scratched in. Well, that's where tattoos, the tattoos were used that way a lot for slaves. That's right. Brand new. You got a certain tattoo that, that showed that you belonged to a certain person. You know? That's very interesting. Or animals. Or, you know, like that. They look physically. I mean, it's basically the same thing as tattooing a brand. Right. Yeah. You know? It's very interesting. I was looking at the word for give because I just think it's so interesting there. You know, that you said it's received. Yeah. But the whole, like, if you look at the definitions of that word, it's basically like to just give someone permission, like, you're granting them whatever, you know. Um, and one of the ones even said to give to one's care and trust, commit, commit to someone or something. I see. That makes sense. But sometimes it just means to permit. So when it says, you give one to someone. but that makes sense with what you said, Megan. I see that now. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't understand why that verb, if it means we receive a mark, why the main meaning of that verb is to give, but it means we commit our trust to somebody. Like to give into something. Exactly, like you're buying into a plan. It can also mean to grant or permit. So you're giving your permission. Right. I see that. Thank you, Megan. He's exactly. making you do it, but you're giving him permission. I mean, it kind of. Right. They don't seem to go hand in hand, but I guess they do. Because technically, he can't force you to take it. You can just say, I'm going to die. I'll be killed right. before right. I'll take it. Say it, sister. I'm just going back on the word closet because I'm thinking, if I stick my foot out there and, and tell the walk by, I'm causing her to trip. I don't know, I'm thinking that it's, or whatever, you know, that it's causing a person to want to get, I mean, you know, to have an arm, not like, it is still forceful. He's manufacturing the, the things that lead into that. Right. Like the that situation. Yeah. To I see exactly what you, I think I see exactly what you're saying. Like, are you saying that it's not like he's holding me down, making the mark go on me, but he's making the situation so that I'm just going to take it? Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Good. That's what I thought. Like manipulating the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yes. Public opinion, that sort of thing. And here's the thing, I'm, I got to throw out a little bit of what's going on today. Manipulating public opinion, we're at a point in this country right now that we don't know what to believe. We watch CNN, we watch Fox, we read the papers, and I love our local papers. I think they're telling us the truth. But you know, when you get into big national uh, media, which I still, I'm a journal journalist at heart, so I take offense sometimes almost when people talk about the media is just this or that. No, there's a lot of genuine people out there working in journalism. But right now, I don't know what to believe almost. And I don't think the journalists probably know what to believe. I think because it's right. Because sources, like who can you even trust anymore? Who can you even trust anymore? So, again, broken record. We need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and flowing in the Holy Ghost because he shows us truth. We were at Warrior Fest maybe two to three years ago was the year that, what's his name, Zadok prophesied over you, some guy we met there. And I heard God speak clearly to me. He said, I'm going to show you what's real. I thought that was interesting because if it had been me, I would have said, I'm going to show you what's fake so you'll know what's real. But no, he told me, I'm going to show you what's real. And I think there's a lot more to that, but I think we as people of God need to be able to distinguish and discern what is real. If we turn, I'm not telling you turn off your TVs, but I'm saying if we did and just totally trusted God, I don't mean just go about, just turn off your TV so you can go about your daily life. I mean turn off so you can get into your prayer closet. God's going to tell you. I, I feel the Holy Ghost. He's going to tell you what you need to pray for. He's going to tell you what's going on. He did to Daniel. He revealed it to Daniel. He reveals it to his people. 
The other night when I went to bed, I said, I'm not even going to look at any news sites. I'm just going to go to bed. And God, literally, I know it was God, the Holy Ghost, kept me awake for hours interceding. And all I could intercede for was Israel, Israel. I pray for Israel every day. I pray for Jerusalem every day. This was different. He had me naming Netanyahu, the prime minister. He had me naming the Knesset, which is their, it's like our uh, governing by our Congress or something. He had me talking about the Knesset. And I have not read anything about Israel in a long time. I'm sorry to say. I didn't know anything. But it was like key that I pray about that, specific stuff. So the next day I thought, let me Google and see if something's going on. Turns out. That the very day God had me praying about that, France, Germany, Egypt, and Jordan formed an alliance called the Munich Group. I find that, I'll be honest, that just runs chills over me. Because Munich, if you'll remember, is where the Israeli athletes in the 1972 Olympics were killed. And it's the Munich Group, you know, where Hitler, where they were. The Munich Group and what they are wanting to do is, and this all relates to this, what I'm saying. What they want to do is create the two states in Israel, the Palestinian state, the Israeli state, which a lot of people, you know, President Trump has a plan for two states. However, the Munich group, they have a plan to say, we're going to go back to pre-1967 boundaries. See, Israel fought a war in 1967 and got a lot of stuff back. Part of Jerusalem, they got stuff back. But this Munich group says, no, we're going to pretend like that war never happened, that Israel never won it. And we're going to go back to the pre-1967 boundaries and take a lot of land that Israel had gained. And they're trying to persuade other countries to come along with them and go for this solution. Now, that is a dangerous solution. I told Alan when I read the next day, when I Googled it, and I'm like, that's why I was praying about this in the night. The Knesset, their governing body, is very involved right now. Half of them trying to fight against the Munich group, and some of them believe in the Munich group's idea is cool. But I rose up and said, Alan, this is dangerous. We can't let this happen. We've got to pray. It's all going to play into this. It all is going to come back to Israel, even this, which is why that idea of the Jewish false prophet you were saying is very... Did you not know that something like that, you know, talked about ten days about Israel getting their land back or whatever, you don't know that something like that could lead to them fighting back and getting even more land. Oh, there's more they're supposed to get. That's right. You, know, you don't know that something like that could lead to them having to fight and then end up taking even more. One of the members of uh, the Knesset, I believe it was, spoke up and said what they're doing right now is really just making us rise up to say, don't try it. Don't try it. I told Alan, I said, they're messing with the wrong country right there. And they're ready because they've been vaccinated in record numbers. Y'all might die. And they still won't be here, man. They'll still be here <laughs> fighting the good fight. I'm joking. I'm joking. I know. I'm saying all of that to say, if, you pray, if we pray, if we're in our prayer closets, if we're in communion with him, the Holy Ghost is going to tell us what's real. And the converse of that is you're going to know what's fake, too, at that point. And we need to know what's going on with the news right now. Can I also just mention that Please. in this verse, it really strikes me that it, because I had never thought of it as the young either, so I didn't know that that's yeah. what small meant. It's just interesting that, because, you know, we're going to talk next about how it prevents people from buying or selling, but children have no need to buy or sell, so that's just so interesting to me that it's, like, mandatory for everyone. But they're going to grow into people. Exactly. It's like grooming. That, that's just the new way, period, in the future. You know? The new way, period. Grooming the, the even the young. Condition. Yeah. Groom the generations. So what? 100%. Well, I wonder, though, what the biblical, what would be God's response if you're a 10-year-old kid and your parents take the mark and you're a kid and you can get the mark and your parents, you physically can't and don't have any choice but to take the mark because your parents make you get it. That's a great question right there. I had never thought of that. Let's read the end of this and, get, and put all this in with it. Y'all keep me apprised of time. What is it right now? Eight or nine. Okay, so about 20 more minutes and we'll, we'll shut her down. We may not even get to our new pages. We'll see. So, let's pick it back up with verse 17. And that no man 
might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here's where I'm telling you, they name all of these things separately for some reason. So let's read it again. It's going to be either the mark, the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. If you don't understand biblical um, numbering of ages and stuff, a score is 20 years. So three score is three times 20, which is 60. So this adds up to 666. Now, let's look at what some of these words mean, and then we'll stop and go into more discussion here. So we're talking about in verse 17, the number of his name. Number, you'll recognize that word. Look at the Greek word. Don't y'all recognize that? It looks like arithmetic. It's not pronounced the same, but it looks like it. Like uh, It's like arithmos. And it means, literally, a number, but there's more to it. A number that is reckoned up. In other words, it's not just a number. It's something you've somehow computed or counted. Uh, a number that is reckoned up. Thayer's Greek lexicon says it is a number whose letters indicate a certain man. Now, every time it mentions number, it's going to be the same word. That sounds like, it looks like arithmetic. Now go to the very bottom of that page. And I'm sorry, I don't have anything here. You can share with me. The bottom of the page, there's a word there you may have never seen. It's called gematria. It is an, it's an alphanumeric code of assigning a numerical value to a name, word, or phrase based on its letters. For example, with some methods of gematria, Jesus in Greek equals 888. Nero Caesar who was that emperor who persecuted Christians, equaled 666. Some scholars say the number of the Antichrist is 616 through, through like a mistranslation. I went into all that, and it's very interesting, but I, I don't see it. I see it that it's 666. But if you want to do further study to see if you think it can be 616, do it. Let us know what you find out. So, with Gematria, and I'll tell you, um, my kids will either smile or grimace when I tell this story. But I think it was Chuck Swindoll. You know, he was a preacher. Is he still alive, Chuck Swindoll? No. So, and it was him or somebody like that. I don't want to give, say it was him and somebody watches and oh, it wasn't him. One of those preachers like that from maybe the 80s who said that since six is a base number we're dealing with here, six, 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 that if you assign those numerical values with sixes to our alphabet, for example, A would equal six. Then you go up another increment, B would equal 12. You keep going all the way to Z in increments of six. Uh, he said that it would be a system like that. He did not say it was going to be that. He was given the illustration that that's how you could possibly count the number of a name. This is a very, very Jewish idea. The Bible has all, the, the Jewish scholars from the beginning, pretty much, have always assigned numerical values to, to their letters. When we celebrate some of these holidays, we celebrate Hanukkah, Sukkot, whatever. Uh, one of them, maybe Sukkot, I could be wrong. You, they don't allow you to eat nuts at that festival. Because the gematria, the alphanumeric reckoning of the word nuts in Hebrew mean equals the same thing as sin. So the same thing that the word for sin equals, nuts equals. Now that doesn't mean you can't eat nuts. There's just a certain time at one of the festivals they say, oh, since it equals the same thing as sin, let's leave that out. So the Jews have always been big on this. So John, the revelator, who wrote all this down from the revelation he had of Jesus here, is, is very familiar with this system of assigning a numeric value to a letter. So does that help you understand maybe more how this could be reckoned or counted? The reason I said my kids would smile or grimace is once I uh, read about that preacher who said it could be increments of sixes, man, I started, didn't I, kids, for years, I was adding up everybody's name. If 
I met somebody. I was adding up their name. See what their name equals. Does it equal 666? You know, I was, um, I was so good at it. I'm not anymore because I don't do it anymore. I was so good at it. You could tell me a name and I could add it up in my head just like that because I knew what every letter represented. I still know O is 90, P is 96. You know, I can still tell you some of these values. But, um, you know, I don't know that it's added Sounds up like in English. Superstition. Huh? Sounds like superstition. I think it's counting up the number of a name. I think that's what it's doing. I just don't think it's in English. Yeah. I think it's very possibly in Greek or Hebrew. But I don't know. English is the universal language now. Most all nations teach people English. So I do not think it's superstition. I 100% believe that's how the number of the beast can be counted. But that's just me. I'm saying us using it to try to figure stuff out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, no, no. I was doing it with. I was. I'm saying I was doing it with, yeah. with world leaders. Yeah. Like I was trying to do it with uh, Bill Clinton. What is his name? And, you know, add up yeah. to. Or yeah. I was trying to do people's names that I thought could the Antichrist be in France right now. What does the prime minister's name add up to? You know, that kind of thing. The only time I did it with people I met is if it was uh, uh, I had a really odd feeling about them. It worked a time or two, but anyway. Um, so, when we look at the number, now you get an idea of what this can mean. And it says that we're supposed to have wisdom. This is verse 18. Here is wisdom. There's a reason that's there. In other words, this is telling you, reading this book, Revelation. Listen up, everybody. Here's wisdom. Here's your clue. Here's your tip. Here's your insider tip. Listen up. Wisdom, there is the typical Greek word for wisdom, sophia, sophia, which means wisdom, literally higher or lower, worldly or spiritual. There's Greek lexicon says that the word wisdom there means intelligence evinced in discovering the meaning of some mysterious number or vision. So it says, here is wisdom, listen up, let him that hath understanding count. Let's look at the word count on the back there. It is the word sophezo. And it means such as you would be counting with pebbles. Like you would be counting one pebble, two pebbles. Like you're computing, you're calculating, you're reckoning something. Thayer's Greek lexicon says you explain by computing. It's interesting that it means compute. And, you know, Thayer died, I guess, before we had computers even. Now we've got technology that can definitely compute. So that is what it says. Let him that hath understanding compute, calculate, count up like you're counting pebbles, the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And again, the word for man there is anthropos, which simply means a human being, both male and female. It is the number of a man, and his number is 666. Let's stop it there and let's talk. Even get back to what Elijah was going to say. This may be as far as we get. If that's the case, you can either bring those new papers back next time, or you can give them to me, and I'll try to remember to bring it back. Yeah, well, let's talk about it now. Maybe not. But wisdom, when it's talking about wisdom, uh, discovering the meaning of some mysterious. interpretation of what that means. And when he says mysterious, he simply means it was a mystery. You know, the Bible says mystery. You know, yeah. many times the Bible says here is the mystery. Great is the mystery of godliness. So it is sort of a biblical term for something that we don't really know what it is right now. It's, it's hard to understand. Give me thoughts on this. You had brought up a good point a while ago. I, I probably made you forget it. Go on. Children. You brought up the children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just think once again it shows like when we're looking at the end of time, who looks like Jesus? Because this is the opposite. There's a scripture I went and looked up in Isaiah where it says that God has graven us on the palm of his hand. Yes. So we have a Savior who, I mean, obviously he had holes in his hands. Scripture that talks about him graving his, our name in his hands. He gave himself for us. 
And this is the exact opposite of that story. Somebody who forces you to have his name in your hand, and if not, he'll kill you as opposed to our Savior had our name in his hand, and he was willing to die for us. That's good. So just always look at what, is it a servant leader? That's what we have to look at in these last days. The attitude and the humility of someone. I was like, drop the mic on that right there because I never thought about that. Also, that's good. Another thing that kind of parallels that is the fact that Jesus left a mark on you spiritually on the inside. The devil, whenever he comes, he wants to leave his mark physically to see it because he is boastful and he wants to be boasted upon. Now, we are supposed to boast about our Lord, and, but it's not like on us and we can't, you know. We can hide our faith and we, we can hide it under a bushel if we wanted to. Like, it's something that God wants us to choose to boast about. The devil, with the Antichrist, it's a mark that, if it's like you think it will be, on the outside, for the, everyone to see, you don't have a choice. It's, it's kind of, I don't know, it kind of, that kind of, Jesus left his mark. I see that, Mostly yeah. spiritually to renew you. He wants to leave his mark physically. So he he, he etched his law in our heart by the Holy Ghost, he says, but this is going to be etched in the skin somehow. Okay, let's take that, because Megan said, I think you said the word hypothetical. Did you use that word a minute ago before we get into the hypothetical? Yeah. If not, I was going to use it. Hypothetically, could it be a microchip? Because it says that it's something maybe visible on the person. And, you know, think about what it says. It says the right hand. Alan was talking about that maybe this morning. Are you talking about the right hand? You were saying it was the hand of power. The right hand was considered the right the hand of power. Sorry for you left-handed folks. No offense. But biblically, the right hand represented power. Well, Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father. Absolutely. And he was the word and the power of God. So there's a reason it's in your right hand, I think. I mean, I'm not going to be necessarily taking any chip, but at the same time, I won't say it won't be a chip, but I think if it is a chip, it's not just going to be like the government's like, hey, we just got these new chips, get them because that's the new way we're going to buy and sell. I mean, that could be a precursor also, or it could be it. It's just, I don't know, like. I think it could be it, definitely. Well, if I'm, the not, government... I'm not saying it's not, but what I'm saying is the mark of the beast is, I don't know, everything about this and the mark of the beast has to do with, and everything it's saying there, making an image bowing down to it. Everything is is aligning yourself with something that is anti-God, that is exalting itself above everything else. And if it's purely just, I don't know, it doesn't seem within the role of everything that that seems purpose that all of that text there seems to serve for it to just be, oh, by the way, we're going to roll this new thing out, and this is how you buy and sell, slip it in, cool. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. That, not to say that there won't be deception involved. I'm just saying, I don't know. There's I'm definitely going to be deception. I know there is, but it sounds like something that is going to be a bowing down to Satan, not just a... I don't, you know. I don't, I don't, I think, I don't know. I think that seems pretty obvious. That's too obvious to me. Scripture, Jesus repeatedly talks about, like, well, I guess it was a common thing in Scripture, like, mammon is a word Jesus used, which is provision, basically, money, um, prosperity. So I think it was very possible. I mean, clearly if you can't buy or sell, there's economic livelihood tied into this. So it could, I mean, mammon is a good enough God to bow down to for some people, you know? But yeah. what my biggest thing is, where does this great, I don't know, like, I feel like everyone thinks it's going to be this thing that's going to be hidden under 15 different, you know, wrappings and packages and that's the mark of the beast and nobody saw it coming but I mean did I, I mean does it say anything like that in the scripture that makes it sound like this thing that's going to be super duper sneaky I mean I know that the beast is going to deceive people into following him but I mean I'm just saying like I don't remember ever reading anything that makes it sound like the mark is going to be this thing that's going to be real sneaky you know it's, it's like something that's going to be really hard to not make that choice because it's going to be like it's forced upon you. But it doesn't, I don't know. I see what you're saying. I, I don't ever, like, people always seem to think, you know, that it's going to be this thing that's like, oh, you better watch because it's going to be sneaky. And it may be. Well, the only thing I would, I see what you're saying, and I don't think there's anything that says this is going to be really super sneaky. But is there, with the fact that he says, here is wisdom. 
Let him that has ears hear. He says, he, let him that has understanding. I think that could almost be your sneak attack thing, saying, hey guys, we're supposed to be praying about this and know about this. And You see what I'm saying? Like maybe yeah. that's the sneaky. I think it's like, when, when it's, I don't know the scripture when he says, you know, to be alert, to be awake and watch. You know, yeah. And having your lamp full of oil, Full of the Holy Ghost, so you know what truth is saying. Isn't there like scripture that says like he tried to deceive the very elect? If, possible? if it were possible, he could deceive the very elect. Think about that. We are the, I believe we're the elect, God's people. He could deceive the very elect if possible. God's not going to let that happen. Well, you just like to me when I'm thinking about this, like it's more like it says that you know, force people to get it where you can't buy or sell. To me, like think about technology. Like how technology progresses to the point where you can't use anything else because everything's outdated. Like we used to use cash, but now hardly anybody carries cash. You debit or credit card, and now for those people, a lot of people pay with Apple Pay or, or something like that, where you know they don't carry cash with them anymore. You still you did things with paper. Now it's gone to our computer. It's digitized, and you don't have a paper option. You know, it's like you can't even go in for an interview or fill out an application because they say go to our website. Like, you know, you see how technology has progressed where you can't go back to the way things were before. You're forced to do things the new way. So you think about with technology, how we're forced to live a, a life of technology now. We can't go back to the way things were. I think it could very easily be something along those lines. I agree. Where it progresses to the point where you can't do anything else about it. You can't go back to the way things were before because technology has advanced to the point and I'm going to piggyback off because I totally agree with you. I'm going to piggyback off that and say I think that COVID is demonic. Is it real? Sure it's real. But it's, I still believe it's demonic. Or the root of it. All disease is the root of it. But I believe this COVID thing has paved the way for more of what you're talking about. Even our kids now can barely go to school and there was a time they couldn't go to school. It all became dependent on technology. It all became dependent on that computer system. It's and about like not having to touch anything, something that can just be scanned or what you a, said. a blue light placed over it or something where you don't have to touch, you don't have to handle anything. It's logical, it's convenient. It's Absolutely. Efficient. It makes so all great of those sense. Things that, that make it seem like it's very convenient and easy that could it is, it is uh, going with what she said. I think you want to say anything about what you were saying. You remember talking about this? Yeah, she, she was saying a lot of the things that uh, you and I were talking about. About it's, it's going to be super convenient, and people are going to be signing up left and right because of that. Uh, some societies, Sweden, for instance, has already gone mainly cashless banks in Sweden. Cash, and uh, I was watching a video. One guy goes, he's from Germany. Where in Germany they still use a lot of cash. He said, so he was going to visit a friend of his that moved from Germany to Sweden, and they go into a bakery, and the, the guy running the bakery is like, you can have five hundred whatever they have crullers or whatever. And he said it's worthless there because nothing they accept it. You know, it's safer too. He said. She brought it up too. With COVID paving the way, nobody wants to touch what somebody else just touched. You know, you don't want to touch the money they just touched. You don't want to touch the debit card they just handed you. So everything would be way more convenient to not have to touch whenever you make a purchase or sell something. So we're, we're being, I mean, we, we have been conditioned. Like she was talking about with the, the debit card. Who else got a debit card in here? Who got a credit card? Who does Apple Pay? I don't know how, but that's one person, but a young person. A young person. Like I was saying today, the younger people are going to be eating it up, man. And as you, you said, the older people are going to be dying out. People that use cash. I used to not pay with anything. I 
Elizabeth Cash. We'll write a check. Now I rarely pay with cash, so in a few years I have been conditioned to. Yeah, you were totally different when I married you. Totally different. I, I have been conditioned to use plastic only. I think I don't know. I think a key thing is for one thing, like you said, to be really flowing in the spirit. Yes. Um, because I don't think there's anything wrong with what we're doing right now, sitting around and talking about all this stuff. But ultimately, everything we're talking about is hypothetical. You know, it could vary like that. I think that's my biggest thing is I'm not saying it's not a chip. It right. really could yeah, be I don't know. Yeah. But I'm just saying you can sit around and theorize all you want to about, you know, it's going to be a tattoo or it's going to be a brain or it's a vaccine or it's a chip or it's this or that. Um, and I'm not, I mean, hey, if you don't go the way of, of you know, giving the apple pays and those things and, and it does get to that point, hey, okay, cool. But I, I don't know, I just, I think you have to be really in tune with the Spirit because yes. I think we have to be, I think God is going to lead us into these things and not that we don't do some thinking ahead of time. Um, I'm just saying, I don't know, I, I, think, I think you can, I mean, it almost seems, because it almost seems a little too easy to be that almost at the same time because I know you're saying, well, that's a sneaky thing, but like so many people are saying that, that it's, oh, they're going to be chip. I mean, every single conspiracy theorist dad watches on YouTube says it's the chips that they're putting in people, and it could be. I'm just saying, I don't know. You can launch it your way all day and night, even in any direction, but we have to be flowing in the spirit and not be a people that says outright, oh, I will 100% not do this or that. If maybe it wasn't the chip, and it and it was God's will for you to be able to buy and sell for that temporary time with a chip, so you could be around longer to minister, and then the next thing comes, and that's where the cutoff is. I don't know. I'm not saying it that's either. where the Holy Ghost tells us. Exactly. I I'm agree with what you say. The the only reason I think it's not such a bad idea to to throw out the modern things that are happening is because we're being faced with this more and more, and when it comes into your face, and somebody says. Hey, you got to do this. I want to. I want to. Oh, obviously, I want to pray and get the Holy Ghost word on it. But I want to be aware of what's out there. I agree. And maybe there's something new, like he said. Maybe there's something we don't even know about that's out there that's going to suddenly be presented to us. And then the Holy Ghost says, "That's it." There were Christians in the 20s, 30s, whenever Social Security numbers came out who said, that's the mark of the beast. We will never take a social security number. We will never have one. Well, if it's the mark of the beast, we're all doomed. You know, it's not the mark of the beast. So, you know, most of those people are dead now. But they said, that's the mark of the beast. People are saying these real IDs are the mark of the beast. Say what now? I've heard a lot of people say these real IDs are the mark I've heard that too. So we can't say, for the sake of the camera, we can't, I can't say right now, it's the microchip. It's the vaccine. I don't think it is a vaccine. I can't say that because I don't know. And innovation, but I want to be aware of what's coming and be praying on it. Innovation uh, is moving in scary directions in a lot of ways. But at the same time, we've been moving forward in innovation for all eternity. At one point, they were bartering stones, you know? And then at some point, cash and gold and things like that came along, and you couldn't use the stone anymore to try to buy something. You just couldn't do it. That's not how it worked anymore. You know, there has always been a certain point at which driving certain cars, you can't because it's illegal because of the emissions. You can't buy or sell cars like that anymore. I'm just saying I think that it's really good to toss out all of these ideas. I think, but ultimately it's going to be spirit led because every generation has said, "Well, rap music is of the devil." Well, you know. So I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying at the same time, I don't know. I'm not going to demonize I, anything. I, I think that it's possible that it's not. You know, it, it could be a chip or something. It could be something with capability. Or it could simply just be a marker that indicates that we're okay. Sort of like how in the Holocaust they marked Jews like in a bad way. Like Jews, you know that person is a Jew, so we know that we can target them. Almost like we know this person is vetted and they're okay because they've said that I agree to, to live in this system. Like I'm just thinking like the way cancel culture is so toxic right now. And it's like they write people off and you're gone forever. There's all of this high mentality that we all have to think exactly alike. And you, you know, on certain issues, you can't even disagree with people or you're canceled completely. So it's also possible to me that there sort of becomes like this acceptable mode of thought. And you're marked as that's what you subscribe to. 
And anybody who hasn't subscribed to that, then they're, you can't be canceled. part of society. You're canceled. But in a more extreme way than getting kicked off of social media, like you're canceled in life. You cannot partake in society. You can't buy or sell. And that's, and I, we're, we're basically done if you want to know about the papers. Take your papers home with you. I'm done with it. And we can cut the camera off. Not yet. And if anybody's got to go, I know some of y'all do, you can go ahead and go. And I'll see you Sunday morning, maybe. We're, we're going to make a decision on outdoors in the afternoon or indoors in the morning. However, uh, I see what you're saying. The whole buy and sell thing, it has to have something to do economically with money, obviously, because it's buying or selling. So we know automatically it's something to do with our finances that means life or death. And people will give in to a lot of things when it means their kids won't starve. Or they won't starve. How about you get divorced? Everybody has bank accounts. Everybody has money in those bank accounts. Let's say you have no access to that bank account without something, you know, or you would be forced to do that. I think you're not to buy or sell without that money in your bank account. You do not have access without the more. You are forced to take it. Or that might be, I, I would, to me, that is almost a stronger motivation than even deception. Not to say that there won't be deception involved in that. But well, I think, what now involved? No, I'm saying, I think that that, like the, the, the motive between if you, you die, if yeah, you're yeah. not taking this, I think you have, you, I think you could have a lot of Christians that maybe more casual Christians that are just, oh yeah, I believe in God, but if it came down to they die, their family die, everyone they love dies, and you can maybe even say, hey, this is, you're taking the Margaret Lee's here, or you're, you know, you're taking, or you can just know that you're aligning yourself with something not good, and you'd still take it because you're not willing to die or give up this life, or the people you love. So I think there will be deception involved, but I think we underestimate, because we in America, we have it so good, we've been so blessed. We, I don't even know how we'd survive without, tech, without cell phones, you know, or modern technology. So I can't even imagine not being able to buy or sell. But I'm just saying, I don't think we can underestimate the power of the promise of you're probably going to die if you don't get this. Right. You know? Just human nature that won't die. Our best this week, if you knew that your children or grandchildren were going to die and come to put by ourselves, if you knew they were going to die, did you not do something to help them? And I said, I would have to still stand for God. You better. Because I think at that point, and we are coming near the end of time. I, I believe it. Believe that, I believe it too. That he inter, inter, can intervene some way or another. If it shouldn't worry us, I mean it would worry us, but you know it wouldn't want us to take that mark regardless. I, I think God with his children, he loves us. And I know he's loved the ones who were killed in the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. But still, I would have to stay. And when I said the other, I think maybe last week, I would pray, Lord, help me to stand and then to stand. You have to understand, that's a deep thing right there. Mm -hmm. Help me to stand and then to stand. And if we've got that in us, I, I, I'm going to say, <laughs> you know, we, we never know what we're going to do until that time comes. But I don't think that I would, even if I saw my children there hungry and starving to death, I, I would not take the mark of the beast. We have to have our minds and spirits so made up on that that we know I, I am not taking the mark of the beast. I am not. And I think her stand and then stand is very deep, definitely. And I think it goes back to a scripture we read last week in Revelation 13 where it says that here is the patience of the saints. And if you'll remember when we looked up the Greek word patience, it meant steadfastness, endurance, even in persecution. That's when you stand. It's, it's real easy to say you're going to stand right now. I'm going to stand. But how are you going to stand when the persecution hits? When you got uh, little Ava and little Paisley saying, I'm hungry, I'm just so hungry. And what are you going to do then? we got to stand. Why do you, at Hanukkah, do you think I teach every year about how the ancient Jews stood 
when Antiochus Epiphanes came in and took over and said, you either kill this pig on the altar or sacrifice it or you die. And Hannah watched seven of her children be killed and she encouraged them, don't you give in. I, she, they skinned them alive. They skinned one of them alive in front of her. I'm not trying to scare you, make you like, oh no. I'm telling you, that's the kind of thing she stood and said, I'm not giving in. And she encouraged the child who was being skinned alive. Don't give in. Don't you dare give in. And blaspheme the name of our God. we got to know that we know. I also think when it talks about, um, you know, like you won't be able to buy or sell. That doesn't mean that there won't be miracle provision from the Lord for his people. I so believe that. It doesn't mean that everybody's going to die. You know? But some are. But some are, but it also doesn't say that you're going to die if you don't take the mark. It says you're going to die if you don't worship the, the image, the beast. I don't know what that means exactly, but... Yeah, nothing stops you from going living out in the woods and eating what the Lord has provided for you. You yeah. know, animals, berries, whatever. But, I mean, it doesn't say... That you won't be a part of society. It's just interesting that it says that he'll call the ones who don't worship to be killed. It doesn't say he'll call the ones who don't get the mark to be killed. I think it's just kind of like they won't be able to buy ourselves so they're going to die anyway. But it seems like at that point you would have already had him worship the beast. I don't know. But you know there are two separate verses. If we truly believe in eternity with God forever, then we know that taking the mark to provide physical provision for our family is not saving them anyways. You know? Nothing you can provide physically is saving them. You know, what right. is it, you know, what would it be to gain the world but lose one's soul, you know? So we could gain the whole world, provide, you know, every need for our loved one physically. But if they're not right spiritually, that's the only thing that matters in the end. That's right. Which that's easier said than done, you know. Nobody wants to die. But I'm just saying, you know, we have to steal that in ourselves that if my kids die starving to death or tortured to death, me get taking a mark isn't really helping. No difference, because eternity matters. I, I want to. I was listening to you, but I was also looking for what Megan was talking about next next week. God willing, we'll look at Revelation twenty, and it says that that John said, "I saw the souls of them that were beheaded, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads and in their hands." I don't know. That kind of leads you to think it mm -hmm. does have something to do with. People will be killed for not taking the mark. Well, why wouldn't they kill them? You know, you're not going to take the mark. We're just going to get rid of you. You're, we're not going to have to worry about you. Chop their heads off. We don't have to worry about you. Sorry. But I mean, I guess if it says you won't be able to buy or sell, that implies that you'll still be here and won't be able to do those things. Yeah. Otherwise, why even specify that? For a little while until they get tired of all of us. Yeah. I mean, he's I'm definitely going to kill, kill some people. They're definitely going to kill some people. They're definitely going to kill people for multiple reasons. I'm just saying it specifically. For them to specifically say, if you don't get it, you won't be able to do this. Right. Makes it seem like there is an option not to get it. Yeah, it does. For some definitely. People. Like, it's not just automatically that you're... I guess what I'm saying is it's not just automatically we're going to be killed. We might have the option that we're going to be living outside of the world system at some point. Off the grid. And it might be justified as a simple thing as you're not safe because you don't have this such and such thing that the rest of us have, so we can't protect you, so you can't be protected from hurting other people. It might be, it might not be a, oh, well, we ostracize you because you're evil. It could be a, viewed as a kindness to the world. Like, you didn't fall in line with this, so I'm sorry, but you can't be a part of society. Yeah. Like, you know, with us, I mean, I, I'll wear a mask, I don't mind it, but, you know, you're, well, it's for kindness for everybody else. If you don't get this, you're a bad person. If you don't wear the mask, you're a bad person. If you don't get the vaccine, not just the convenience thing, it's a safety thing because let's say you did have a chip and they can track you. I mean, they can track us right now with our cell phones in our pockets, but they can track whoever, whenever. You know, let's say some kid goes missing. Oh, there he is. Go get him. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about Eric Rudolph. Anybody remember Eric Rudolph? Yeah. Was he the one that bombed, what, the abortion clinic in Atlanta or something? Or, I don't remember. But uh, they didn't find him for how many years? It was years they couldn't find him. He was hiding out in North Carolina. They finally found him, didn't they? Yeah. In the man? Yeah. But he hid out for years. And I remember my uncle works or used to work for the FBI. 
pretty high up, I think. He was pretty important. And he would always joke with us. He'd come down to North Carolina and say, so where is he? Where's Eric Rudolph? Is it, do y'all know where he is? I'm like, nope, don't know where he is. But I, can you do that today? Could you even hide out that they can't find you? Maybe right. without Don't you. take your uh, location and enable a cell phone with you. Don't take your cell phone with you. Although these days, they got so much thermal imaging. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it might be hard for them to find you, but these days, if the government wanted to find you, I don't know if there's anything you can do. Because they can fly over and do yeah. thermal imaging. Yeah, they can fly. They've got satellites that can take such pictures. Technology has blessed us, but it, it ends up almost dooming us. Yeah. Yeah. or leaders are saying, I sort of quit that after I realized that I don't think a lot of them are right. But in the last few days, I felt to go look at some different ones, and I watch them, but they lose me every time when they start saying, and don't forget to get all the guns and bullets you can get. Get all your guns and bullets, because you're going to have to come out with both barrels shining. You know, They lose me right there. I'm like, really? This verse literally warns against that. Saying that in those days, if live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. Guns are our today's sword. Today are. If you live by that mentality of to fight to live, you're probably going to die that way. I would like to think I'm the kind of person, I'm not there yet, never been forced into this, I'd like to think I'm the kind of person that if gangs came out from the cities to try to take our food, if it got bad, that I would say, hey, this is all we got, but come eat with us and we're going to pray for a miracle for it to be multiplied and who knows that you couldn't get those people saved when they came in and said, what? This or, is some country bumpkin Leslie who ain't going to get her rifle out and shoot me if I come up? Or even, I, if, that, or even if, if it wasn't possible for them to be saved or for them to, to, to peaceably leave normally, who's not to say that they can shoot at you a hundred times and they can't touch you, that none of their bullets hurt you? Or wound you, you know, like the preacher when he 
gun from quit fire or right. Todd White when he got shot at from nine, like less than 10 feet away, you know? God, I mean, if we truly trust in the Lord, if something like that happens and that's just how we go, that's how we go, but it is to say that we will. Right. with a differing opinion about anything like on both sides right now we've got two different sides that are very much moving in the same direction kind of like the conservative side is moving to this point where you can't disagree with on any point but also the liberal side is kind of the same way and whichever side wins it's going to be kind of this unity of thought that's evil it's not God's unity and I can just see that anybody outside of that would be subject to the mob mentality like subject to being not welcomed as a part of regular society. Just somehow there's going to be some, it's going to be easier than just he's going to wow people. He's going to wow people. Whatever it is, is going to wow people. It's going to wow people. It's going to seem miraculous. Literally maybe and figuratively. Right. Change. I mean, God can change it. No doubt. 